Welcome to this video series on configuring Domain Rewrite using Quest On Demand. Please make sure you have watched the first video that walks you through creating your project. This video will demonstrate how to review and modify configurations in On Demand and in your tenants to confirm that your Domain Rewrite project is configured successfully. We will also review general navigation within the Domain Rewrite project, including confirming that tenant discovery is successful. You will start by logging into Quest On Demand and accessing the organization for which you have configured your Domain Rewrite project. From the left nav bar, expand Migration and select Domain Rewrite to open the Domain Rewrite interface in a new browser tab. Click on the Domain Rewrite project you created to navigate to its dashboard. Since the source tenant discovery has completed, you will see a summary of users discovered along with any automated matches that occurred based on the attribute pairings defined in your project setup wizard. If you want to review the configurations that you selected in the wizard, click the wrench icon in the upper right labeled Setup. If you wish to make any changes, click on a section heading to go to that portion of the wizard. For instance, if you want to add another domain pairing or review your attribute pairings, click on Domains, then navigate to the appropriate screen, and then make the changes desired. Note that any changes that you make will take effect as soon as you click Next or click the double arrow in the lower right that skips the summary. To return to the dashboard, open the menu in the upper left and select Dashboard. There are some additional settings that you can review either by clicking the gear icon in the upper right labeled Settings or by opening the menu in the upper left and selecting an option from under Settings. The Environments tab in Settings will display a summary of your environments, including their connectivity status. If an environment shows connectivity issues, you can hover over that environment and click on Reconnect. Enter the credentials of your global admin account to reestablish the required consent. For any hybrid environments that you have, you will see one additional selection when you hover over the environment. By clicking Edit, you can make changes and add additional forests or domains to which this tenant is connected. The Discovery tab will display the status of each tenant's discovery. By default, discoveries will run once a day to discover new objects, and to discover important object changes such as UPN or email address changes. If you need to run an immediate discovery for a tenant, hover over the environment and click on Run Discovery. If for some reason a discovery is not running successfully for a tenant, an X will be displayed under Status instead of a checkmark. In these cases, you can download the logs to review any errors that have been reported and address them. The Directory Integration tab will show the history of domain rewrite jobs that occur once you start enabling and disabling rewrite for your specific users. When you scroll down, you will also see details for any directory sync agents associated with any hybrid environments used in this project. The Rewrite Service tab will show information about your DNS and certificates. The source tenant is displayed by default, and it will list all accepted domains discovered in the tenant. There will be a checkmark displayed for any domain for which you have published the DNS record for DKIM. Make sure you also place a checkmark in the box to the left of each of those domains. The expiration date of the SSL certificate is also displayed on this screen. When this certificate is nearing its expiration date, you will see an orange alert in the upper right to warn you that you should upload a new certificate before the current one expires. The only alert that I have is just a notification alert for something else and no action is required at this time. The Domain Rewrite Background Service is running continually to check the project for users who should have Domain Rewrite enabled or disabled. 
This service will send commands to each of the tenants to perform the required changes. You can download the activity logs for this background service from this page. Now click the drop-down and select the target tenant to view details for the target domains, DNS records, certificate status, and background service activity logs. Click Back to Dashboard in the upper right to return to the dashboard. Let's take a look at the settings that On Demand automatically configured in your source and target tenants. This includes new accounts, groups, connectors, and transport roles. When you first create a domain rewrite project, On Demand creates three dedicated cloud-only service accounts that will be used for performing PowerShell actions, including many of the discovery tasks. Two of these accounts will not have any licenses assigned to them, but one of them will be assigned an available license SKU that contains the Exchange Online feature within it. The first two accounts listed here will have three admin roles assigned to them, Exchange Admin, User Admin, and Teams Admin. The third account, the one that is licensed, will have the Exchange Admin role assigned to it. Note that all three of these accounts must be excluded from any policies that require MFA. If you have identified any discovery errors within On Demand for one of these tenants, it is usually due to an MFA requirement, and this is easily resolved. You can check whether this is actually the case by checking the sign-in logs in Azure for each of the three PowerShell accounts. Check the status column for success and failure. And if you find one that shows a failure, check the conditional access column. You will likely see that a policy is being applied. Click on the record to view the details of the sign-in attempt, and then review which conditional access policies are applied. Identify the ones that are requiring MFA, and then modify those policies to exclude these three accounts. Next, we'll review the groups that On Demand created in your tenants. First, each tenant will have a mail-enabled security group. The name will be similar to the users we just reviewed, and we'll start with the words binary tree. This group will contain the two unlicensed service accounts. You will not need to make any modifications to this group. In addition to the mail-enabled security group, there will be new distribution groups created in each tenant. This is where there is a slight difference between the source tenant and the target tenant. On the left, we can see that the source tenant has three groups created. These groups will control which mailboxes are being rewritten as target and which are being rewritten as source. Just like the first group we reviewed, you should not modify these groups yourself. On Demand will automatically update the membership in these groups when you perform the rewrite actions within the tool. On the right-hand side of my screen is the target tenant. You can see that there are some additional groups. And again, you do not need to manage these groups yourself. On-demand rewrite will automatically update the membership of these groups. On-demand will automatically create two connectors in each of your tenants, an inbound connector and an outbound connector. The outbound connector will control the messages that are sent from your tenant to the on-demand domain rewrite service for messages that need to be rewritten. You can see in the description of the connector where these messages are being routed. The inbound connector will be used to receive messages that have already been rewritten by the on-demand rewrite service. Once they are received back into your tenant, they will be processed and sent out using your normal mail transport configuration. Note that these connectors are securely routing the messages using SSL encryption and are linked to the certificates that you provided during project setup. Finally, you will see new transport rules created in each tenant. There will be a minimum of eight new rules created, and they will be listed at the top as priority zero through seven. If the matching tenant has a large number of accepted domains, you may see some additional rules created to help identify all the various domains that might be found during cross-tenant message routing. If you want to modify any of these rules to prevent domain rewrite from occurring when sending to specific external recipients, or if you need guidance on how these rules interact with your existing setup, 
or if you have complexities in your current mail flow, you can contact Quest Professional Services for assistance with customization. Otherwise, these rules will just perform using their default settings, which utilize the groups and connectors that we just reviewed. If you determine that you no longer require domain rewrite functionality for your tenants, you can disable the entire service from within the on-demand domain rewrite project. This will automatically remove the connectors and transport rules from both the source and target tenants. Note that you may need to manually remove some of the groups. To disable domain rewrite, you will start by going back to the setup wizard. From the summary screen, click on the subheading called Email Address Rewriting. Change your answer from yes to no and click next. Since I still require domain rewrite functionality in my tenants, I will not make this change. This completes part two of the domain rewrite video series. Please continue to the next video to confirm your user matching and start using domain rewrite.